So good afternoon, everyone. I am Beatrix Fogarashi, and uh, the title of my PhD is Investigating the Role of Psychological Interventions in Inflammatory Digestive System Diseases. I work as a psychologist at the Division of Pancreatic Diseases. And my vision is to, to incorporate psychological health into healthcare, which can lead to shorter recovery time. My mission for this is to prove the importance of psychology and to provide bigger recognition in healthcare. I have three projects uh, during my PhD. The first one is uh, about uh, psychological interventions in inflammatory digestive system diseases. The second one is about interventions for alcohol and nicotine consumption. And related to this, I got the opportunity to participate in the clinical trial where I perform interventions for nicotine and alcohol consumption. My first project in details. It is the investigation of efficacy and safety of psychological interventions in inflammatory digestive system diseases. We know that around 11% of the population suffers from chronic digestive system diseases. Moreover, psychological distress can lead to poor uh, digestive gastrointestinal uh, functions. Moreover, psychological interventions are not only useful uh, for improve the outcomes of the original disease, but also to prevent developing comorbid mental illnesses. The most important fact is that there is no evidence-based psychological treatment protocol, so we need to have one uh, in, in Hungarian healthcare. Therefore, my aim is to evaluate the efficacy and safety of psychological interventions in patients with inflammatory digestive diseases. The clinical question is that, are these interventions beneficial in this subpopulation? So I will assess uh, psychological interventions versus no psychological interventions uh, in patients receiving standard of care uh, with inflammatory digestive system diseases. I will assess uh, several different outcomes, such as depression, anxiety, disease activity, quality of life, stress, sleep quality, or pain. According to my hypothesis, psychological interventions can improve the outcomes of the, these diseases. Here you can see the systematic search and the selection. We started uh, more than, with more than 13,000 articles, and we involved uh, 71 in the review. And here you can see the search key also. OK, my first outcome I will show data on today is depression. The reason is that there is a high prevalence of symptom of depression in patients, for example, in inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, up to a quarter of the, the patients suffer from depression. Moreover, depression can be negatively impact self-management, and it is associated with disease outcomes such as increased risk of rehospitalization, surgery, or unnecessary interventions. On this plot, you can see uh, my first results. You can see that uh, we had data on depression in 24 uh, articles with uh, around 2,000 patients. You can also see that we have uh, data uh, at baseline before the intervention and after the end of the intervention called post-intervention measurement. Here you can see the type of the diseases we included in this uh, analysis and uh, we calculated standardized mean difference due to the different uh, questionnaires and scales used in the, the articles. And uh, as you can see, we have a large heterogeneity due to the population and different diseases. Uh, as you can see, our overall results show that there is a significant result uh, and uh, psychological interventions can significantly reduce depressive symptoms compared with the control group with no intervention. On this plot, you can see that there is no public publication bias uh, in this analysis. Okay, so this is my first result, but I will have many other results. Uh, also on depression, we are planning to have uh, analysis on short, mid, and long-term effects of intervention based on the time of the measurement. 
Uh, we also have a meta regression uh, based on the length of the intervention. And uh, in these two cases, we are waiting for the, to receive the uh, data back from the statistician. Um, further outcomes are coming too. Uh, this is activity quality of life, anxiety, stress, sleep quality um, are on the way and I am preparing the data table for the statistician. The extraction is ready. Uh, in the meanwhile, we started the risk of bias and quality of evidence assessment. To summarize uh, this meta-analysis, uh, I think this will be a comprehensive overview and interpretation of the results in the main digestive system diseases. We will have the highest level of evidence since we only included uh, RCTs and we had a high number of studies with a high number of patients. The limitation is the study, uh, of the study is that there is a limited number of studies within the different disease subgroups. I pre our preliminary conclusion can be that psychological interventions are effective in reducing depressions, depressive symptoms in inflammatory digestive system diseases. Implication for practice. Based on this uh, analysis, psychological interventions should be a part of the standard patient care in gastroenterology, but we will have to have an intervention protocol uh, before we can do, do it. Implication for research is that we have to identify the most effective form of the intervention, the length and the method of these interventions. And uh, I would like to continue with my second project, which is about uh, interventions on alcohol and nicotine consumption. We know that there is a strong positive association between smoking and alcohol use and the cessation outcomes uh, for patients addicted to both alcohol and nicotine are generally worse than for people addicted to only one substance. Uh, cessation programs for concurrent alcohol and smoking nicotine consumption have not been uh, developed and evaluated yet. Based on these facts, uh, my aim is to evaluate the effectiveness and the safety of these interventions. The clinical question is that which interventions are beneficial in concurrent alcohol and nicotine consumption? I will compare pharmacological, non-pharmacological and combined interventions. And the outcomes will be tobacco and alcohol consumption, relapse rate, hospital admission. According to my hypothesis, the combined pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions are the most effective in this subpopulation. And uh, I would like to say a few words about my third project because I got the privilege to participate in a clinical trial on recurrent acute pancreatitis prevention by the elimination of alcohol and cigarette smoking called REAPIR study um, carried out by Clementina Ochkai. Um, we involved patients with hospitalized, uh, patients who were hospitalized with alcohol-induced acute, acute pancreatitis and after the standard intervention they will be randomized either to the intervention or the control group. On the other side of the slide you can see that the, inter, uh, the protocol of the study is published in the BMG uh, Open Journal. A few words about the the intervention. The patients in the intervention group will receive um, intervention in every three months on alcohol and nicotine cessation, uh, while in the control group uh, there will be a follow-up visit at one year without intervention. And we will follow up the patients uh, for two years. And finally, my role in the trial, I took part uh, in the development of the intervention protocol, the education for residents and clinical trial administrations. Uh, and uh, at the ward, I am, performing, I, mean, I am performing the interventions and coordinating the patient involvement. And I would like to close my presentation with a quote, which is very important for me when I work as a psychologist. I learned that people will forget what you said, People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Thank you for your attention.
that there are several types of psychological intervention. And uh, in, the in the first project of yours, which kind of psychological interventions were used in the articles that you included? I think this can be a strength, also can be a strength of our uh, study because we included various types of interventions such as cognitive behavior therapy, hypnosis, psychoeducation, and we also had uh, interventions provided by nurses, trained nurses. So um, there are a lot of different uh, interventions included in the study. My question is a bit like the chicken or the egg uh, concerning your first uh, topic, that uh, do you have any knowledge about uh, which is more common or do the articles mention and that these are patients who are already diagnosed with depression and, after, and this can be a contributing factor to the escalation of uh, the inflammatory bowel diseases mm -hmm. or vice versa and uh, after the, they are diagnosed with such a serious and uh, um, okay, um, disease which uh, decreases the quality of life and after they, that, uh, they have fallen into that depression. Because if you know the difference, then maybe the therapies can be modulated a bit. Mm -hmm. This is a very good question. And there is a new area of research um, searching for this, the answer to this question. And uh, it's called uh, psychogastroenterology. And it's based on the brain-gut uh, axis. And uh, basically, we are trying to find out the connection between them. But I am sure that there are uh, examples for both, uh, both cases. So before they had depression before the, the disease, and they can develop depression during the, the disease also. But it's a very great question. Thank you. Did you have clinical depression as the outcome? This is a great question. Uh, <laughs> Depression as a diagnosis is not included in the study uh, because we ex excluded clinical depression. And uh, basically, this, this is um, depressive symptoms measured by questionnaires. And basically, these questionnaires measure depression with cutoff points. So they can say that there is the chance of uh, uh, mild, uh, severe, or moderate depression, but it is not a diagnosis, and uh, it is always needed to have a psychological, clinical psychological uh, opinion on it. So basically, we can uh, compare the average scores in these questionnaires. How will you evaluate the outcomes, I mean, the effectiveness of, of the intervention in the project? Yes. Um, Basically, we have uh, questionnaires uh, about uh, alcohol and uh, nicotine consumption, and I think the, one of the biggest strengths of this study is that we will uh, be collecting uh, urine and uh, blood, blood samples, and also we are collecting hair samples for hair nicotine measurements. <laughs>